This is the second of two videos that looks at eigenvalues and eigenvectors. In the first video, we have seen how to find eigenvalues, and we write these as lambda. For each lambda, how do we find the eigenvector, an eigenvector that goes with it? We know that our fundamental equation that we're working with here is that when matrix M multiplies an eigenvector V, it just gives us back that V scaled by lambda. And another way to write that is that M minus lambda times the identity multiplied by V is equal to vector zero. This is the same equation written two different ways. What we need to know now that we um, have obtained our lambda values, we just need to look at one of these equations and figure out an acceptable vector. I find that it's more useful to use the form on the right-hand side. OK, let's look at a particular example. We'll have the matrix 2, 4, 1, minus 1. We looked at this before, and we found already that its eigenvalues are equal to 3 and minus 2. What we're going to do now is we're going to take those values one at a time and figure out an acceptable eigenvector. We're going to write our vector that we need to find as just x and y, where we need to find these x, y values. Now take a look at this green underlined equation, and in particular the matrix, which is a difference of two different matrices, m and lambda times the identity. Now that we have our lambda value of 3, we could write out that difference, that difference matrix. It's going to be 2 minus 3 and then just 4, and then just 1, and minus 1, minus 3. There it is. And we're saying that when that multiplies our vector x, y, it gives us 0, 0. So let's go ahead and clean this equation up. We have minus 1, 4, 1, minus 4, onto x and y. If we want to be explicit about that, we can multiply out. It means minus x plus 4y and x minus 4y. And that we know is equal to 0, 0. Now what we immediately notice here is that whilst this, uh, this equation between two columns, two column vectors is telling us two things, it's actually telling us the same equation twice. So uh, we can see here that we're saying minus x plus 4y is equal to 0. And we're also saying that x minus 4y is equal to 0. That's telling us the same thing. Is that a problem? No. That's exactly what we want to see at this stage. We should find that when we work on uh, eigenvalue and eigenvector problems based on a 2 by 2 matrix, then really only one of these rows in the final expression uh, constrains us, and the other one doesn't add any new constraint. So this is exactly what we want. So now, how do we go ahead and solve it? We're saying that uh, minus x plus 4y is equal to 0. Uh, of course, we can just rearrange this to say instead that 4y is equal to x. And that's the only constraint we have. What we're allowed to do is choose, we can choose, the simplest um, values of uh, x and y that will make this work. So I'm going to choose y is equal to 1, and then I'll find that x is equal to 4. And that is a perfectly acceptable eigenvector for 1 to go with my eigenvalue. We will always have this freedom in choosing the elements of our eigenvector. Really this freedom simply corresponds to choosing how long the eigenvector is, in other words its magnitude. Because if a particular eigenvector, eigenvector satisfies our equations, a scaled version of that same eigenvector will still satisfy with the same eigenvalue. Now, while the eigenvector can have any length, we might specifically have been asked for a normalized eigenvector. That simply means we need to take the one that we found and scale it to have unit length. So in this case, since it's 4, 1, we need to divide by uh, root 17 to scale to unit length. Simple as that. So there we are, that's our eigenvector and a normalized version of it. 
Now, we still haven't found the eigenvector for the other eigenvalue, which was minus 2. Let me uh, just move this up on the screen to make space to do that at the bottom. So here we go. We do exactly the same procedure. We subtract minus 2 on the diagonal. 2 minus minus 2 and 4 and 1 minus 1 minus minus 2. Lots of minuses there. So let's uh, tidy that up. That's going to be 4, 4, 1 and in fact another 1. And then times x, y is equal to 0, 0. As before, we see that really these, this is the same equation twice. There's only one constraint we can read it off simply as x is equal to minus y. So if I choose x is equal to 1, for example, then I'm going to write down an eigenvector 1 minus 1. Or if I'd chosen y is equal to 1, then it would have been minus 1, 1. It doesn't matter. They're both correct eigenvectors to go with our eigenvalue. But if we want to normalize, we'll need to divide by the magnitude 1 over root 2. Okay. So there are acceptable eigenvectors to go with the eigenvalue minus 2. Okay, so now let's find uh, the eigenvectors that go uh, with the eigenvalues for our 3 by 3 matrix M, which was uh, minus 2, 1, 3, 1, minus 1, 0, minus 1, 1, 2. We looked at that before in the previous video, and we found the eigenvalues, which were um, minus 1, root 2, and minus root 2. And I've put little subscripts on our lambdas here, so we know which one we're dealing with. Let's deal with lambda 1 first, which is uh, the one that has value minus 1. So I'll write over here the little equation that we're using over and over again which is that m minus lambda times the identity multiplied by our vector is 0. OK, we need this difference matrix, so we subtract off the diagonal 1 minus minus 1, and then 1, 3, 1, and minus 1, minus minus 1, and 0, minus 1, 1, and 2, minus minus 1. And that's on x, y, and z, because we now need an eigenvector with three elements, and it's going to be equal to simplify the matrix to minus 1, 1, 3, 1, 0, 0, minus 1, 1, and that'll be a 3. And that again is on our x, y, z eigenvector is equal to 0, 0, 0. Now what we immediately notice is that, as before, we don't really have three different equations captured by our matrix equation we only have two. In fact, this is very obvious in this case because the bottom row is the same as the top row. That's not always the case. It's not always the case that the rows are actually identical. But we will always find, if we check, that there are only really two independent equations when we're dealing with 3 by 3 eigenvalue problems. We only have two equations, really. Now, I'm going to... Uh, highlight this row here, 1, 0, 0. That's just saying, in fact, that x is equal to 0. Now, if we take uh, either the top row or the bottom row, we have minus x plus y plus 3z is equal to 0, or y is equal to minus 3z. OK, so now we simply uh, choose any values of y and z. x has been dictated to us, but any values of y, y and z that satisfy these rules. So if I choose z is equal to 1, that's going to give me y is equal to minus 3. And I can straight away then write down a satisfactory eigenvector. It will be 0, minus 3, 1. As simple as that. It doesn't matter where the minus sign is, I could equivalently have uh, chosen z is equal to minus 1, and then I'd have 0, 3, minus 1. If I normalize, then I'll need 1 over root 10, that being 3 squared plus 1 squared, and so that is um, a complete solution for our first eigenvector. We found it in simple form and in normalized form. This is the eigenvector that goes with eigenvalue minus 1. We can go ahead, however, and check this eigenvector to make sure that it works. So for that, we'll simply need to write out our matrix M, the original matrix, which was 
minus 2, 1, 3, 1, minus 1, 0, minus 1, 1, 2. We have our uh, vector 0, 3, minus 1. We just need to do this sum. So the first element is going to be a minus 2 times 0, and then there's a 3, and I see there's a minus 3, so that does give us 0. And our second element is the only non-zero element will be minus 3. And our third, third element there gives us 1. And we can write that as simply minus 1 onto 0, 3, minus 1. And so indeed, we found that this vector works with the eigenvalue of minus 1. Now we can continue to look at, uh, to find the other eigenvectors, but first let's take a pause and review the steps involved. So we're looking at rules for solving eigenvector problems. Eigenvector problem is where we have a square matrix M and we say that M multiplied by some special eigenvector gives us back that eigenvector times just by a value, the eigenvalue. We find the possible eigenvalues using this equation involving a determinant of a difference of two matrices. In general, there are going to be n solutions for an n by n matrix. So two solutions for a 2 by 2, three solutions, three solutions for a 3 by 3 matrix. That's because when we write the determinant, it will have lambda to the power of n as its highest order. So for example, we have cubed to deal with when we're working it out for 3 by 3 matrices. Now, having found those eigenvalues, we then, uh, for each value, need to figure out an acceptable eigenvector. What we've noticed is that generally we only have to use n minus 1 of the rows in the equation that we're working to satisfy. And that meant just one row in the case of 2 by 2 problems and two of the rows in the 3 by 3 problems. We had some freedom as to uh, what values to choose for our eigenvector. And in fact, that freedom corresponded to just scaling the entire eigenvector to a greater or smaller magnitude. And if we were asked to normalize, we would simply work it out using whatever values we like, the simplest values, and scale it at the last step so that it has unit length. OK, so we've covered a lot of ground for one video, and this would be a good place to just stop watching if you like. But I would like to uh, carry on and solve the remaining two eigenvectors for our 3 by 3 example. Because they involve a square root 2, they're actually a bit more messy and tricky to do, and in a way I think that makes for a good, interesting example to see. So let me go ahead and cut back to the screen that we had before with our matrix M spelt out and our possible eigenvalues, and we'll now take the value lambda subscript 2, which is square root 2. So then, as usual, we need to subtract that down the diagonal. So we'll have minus 2 minus square root 2, 1, 3, 1, minus 1 minus square root 2, 0, minus 1, 1, 2 minus square root 2. And that is the thing which, when multiplied by our unknown eigenvector x, y, z, should give us 0, 0, 0. Now, one thing we notice here is the rows look all different. It looks like we've got three different equations captured in this matrix equation, but they are not. If we examine them um, carefully enough, we'd find that we could generate one of these uh, rows from the other two. And in fact, we're only therefore going to need to use two of them. You could pause the video and play with it and see if you can show this, but it must always be the case unless we've made a slip earlier. Okay, so I see that the middle row has a zero, so I'm going to start with that one. It says x plus minus 2 minus root 2 times y is equal to zero. And that means that if I choose a simple value for y of 1, then I can immediately say that x moving across is going to be 1 plus root 2. Good. So now I'll use the uh, top line, which is minus 2 minus uh, root 2, x plus y plus 3z is equal to zero. And I'll substitute in the values that I've already picked and um, inferred. So I'm going to get uh, 1 plus root 2 uh, onto minus 2 minus root 2, that's the x term, plus the y is 1 plus 3z yet to be found is equal to 0. Rearrange. So put z on one side, divide it by a third, expand this thing out, minus 2 
minus root 2, um, minus 2 root 2, minus uh, 2, plus 1. All right. Oh, and there's a minus sign uh, because we've moved it all to the other side from the z, of course. Now we need to tidy this up. But what I notice is that inside the brackets I have a minus 3 and a minus 3 root 2, and that will cancel, cancel with a factor of a minus and third in front, and just give us a very simple expression of 1 plus root 2. So that's our z term. OK, we've uh, found uh, a compatible set of x, y, and z values, so we can now write down an accept acceptable eigenvector. 1 plus root 2, 1, 1 plus root 2. There we are. That is an acceptable eigenvector, and here's where we found those numbers uh, that goes with the eigenvalue lambda 2 is equal to square root 2. Note that I used the same subscript 2 on my vector so that I make it clear that lambda subscript 2 goes along with vector subscript 2. So now our only remaining task is to look at the third eigenvalue which was negative root 2 and find a compatible eigenvector for that one. So as always what we need to do is take the vector m and sub subtract the, the lambda value we found off down the diagonal. And because we're subtracting minus a minus number, we can just add it instead, of course. So that will be minus 2 plus root 2, and then 1, and then 3, and then 1, and minus 1 plus root 2, and 0, and minus 1, and 1, and 2 plus root 2. And that matrix, when multiplied by our unknown eigenvector x, y, z, will give us 0, 0, 0. Now, as before, our middle row looks nicest here. It's just telling us that x plus uh, root 2 minus 1, put it that way around, y times y is equal to 0. That means if I chose y is equal to 1, obvious choice, then x is equal to 1 minus root 2. Watching for signs. Now, if I take, the let's say, the bottom row, I can have minus x plus y uh, plus, 2 plus, 2 root, plus 2 plus root 2 times z is equal to 0. But I can substitute in the values I found, so that will say that uh, square root 2 minus 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus root 2 z is equal to 0. OK, I've got some work to do to find out the value of z here. I'll start by uh, rearranging uh, just um, to put 2 plus root 2 z uh, is equal to minus root 2 on the other side. Uh, but I still need to do a bit more work. Divide both sides. I notice I can simplify simplify by a factor of root 2. I can write this as z is minus 1 over root 2 plus 1. Pause the video and check you agree with me. Um, and then I'm not happy with that because I don't want to leave z as a fraction. I could do, but that would make a very messy looking eigenvector. I notice there's a trick in up I have up my sleeve. I know that if I multiply the top and bottom of a fraction like that, by root 2 minus 1, it will simplify. I will then find that the top, of course, is 1 minus root 2, uh, but the bottom will be 2 plus root 2 minus root 2 minus 1, and that whole expression just comes down to 1. Finally, then, z is equal to 1 minus root 2. We've now found our x, y, and z values that are acceptable. So we're seeing, saying that vector 3 goes with the lambda 3 value is 1 minus root 2, 1, 1 minus root 2. That is an acceptable eigenvector. So we're done. For our 3 by 3 matrix M, we found the three eigenvalues, and for each of them, an eigenvector. The last two of these, which involved the root 2, were uh, more tricky just because there was more to keep track of, more messy expressions, but the basic maths is the same every time.